Hello guys, welcome to my channel Civilogy, the study of civil engineering. Today I have brought to you an important video in which we are going to discuss the most important points which civil engineer must know. Every civil engineer must know. These are going to be very important from interview point of view and these questions are usually asked during interviews. On the other side, if you are working on site, these things will work as a basic knowledge for you. If you have these things in your mind, you will succeed in field work. So this is going to be very important for site workers, site engineers and fresher engineers. So you are requested to watch complete video till the end so that you do not miss any important point. So in this video, we are going to discuss 60 technical points. Okay, so let's start our today's topic. First of all, what is main bar? Main bars are those bars which are provided in shorter span of the slab. If we talk about the one-way slab, this is actually the shape of one-way slab. Okay, in two-way slab, both bars act as main bar because load is transferred on both sides. But in when one-way slab, load is transferred on longer sides on the sides where beams are provided actually beams are provided in these two directions these two sides okay there are no beams on other two sides in one way slab okay so the main bar is provided in shorter span as you can see over here these are the main bars which are mainly responsible for carrying the load okay and the other bar is called as distribution bar and distribution bars are provided in longer span of the slab as you can see over here in blue colors these are distribution bars and their length is longer as compared to main bars their main objective is to transfer or distribute the load up the uh, on the main bars okay and the maximum spacing of the main bar is limited to 3d or 300 mil now this is very going to be uh, this is going to be very important for civil engineer workers. Okay, so the maximum spacing should be limited to 3D where D is the diameter of the bar which is being used as a main or distribution bar reinforcement. Okay, whichever is less lesser one be used as the spacing between the main bar and distribution bars. Okay. And the next point is about handrail. What is handrail? Handrail is basically the support which is provided alongside the staircase for easy climbing and climbing down. Okay. And its height should be 75 to 85 centimeters. And weight of steel, if you want to calculate the weight of steel being a site engineer or a site worker, you should know this formula that weight of steel can be calculated as D square divided by 162.2, where D is the diameter of the bar. Okay. And if you are you working uh, where the unit fit is used, okay. For this, you can use the formula D square divided by 533 kg per fit and slope of staircase as you know that the slope this is the slope the west slab which makes with the horizontal this is the angle this angle should be between 25 degree to 40 degree it should not be steeper okay this slope should not be steeper or nor should be less than 25 degrees okay similarly height of headroom in any case should not be less than 2.5 meters this is very important the next point the maximum number of steps in a single flight should not be more than 15 okay be ensure at the side that the flight should have maximum 15 number of steps the minimum number of steps in a flight should not be less than three okay and the width of each step should be adequate size so that anyone can step and climb easily the width of the landing should not be less than the width of the stair this is very important and technical point that the width of the landing should not be less than the width of the stair now what is landing what is uh, as you can say the now, what are the steps the link uh, I will share in the description must watch that video which is related to the technical terms used in staircase okay also watch that video in the description 
the next point is winder should be now again this is technical term which is related to staircase winder is basically provided in turns where st stair take turns winders are provided and it should be avoided as much as possible if needed may be provided at the lower end of the flight okay the next point is the height of the riser should not be more than 20 centimeter okay is if we draw the steps it is something like that this this is the riser this is the tread again this is riser and this is the tread okay and the riser height this is the riser okay this should not be greater than 20 centimeters and the width of the tread as you can see over here this width should not be more than 11 inches or 28 centimeters and the tread proportion this is very important point that if uh, the first point is 2t t is for tread and r is for riser if this addition is uh, this should lie between 54 to 60 inch in centimeters okay the width of tread and riser should be in centimeters and it should range between 50 54 to 60 okay the another criteria is if you multiply tread with riser the width of the tread multiply where the height of the riser should lie between 400 to 430 and this unit is in centimeters okay this is again very important for those who are working on building projects okay the next point is DPC this is very common DPC stands for damp proof course okay and the thickness of DPC should be equal to 2.5 centimeters or 1 inches okay the height of the parameter wall sorry the height of the parapet wall should be 1 meters because it increases the load it do not have any other purpose okay it should be limited to 1 meter and the height of the building height of the building should be approximately equal to 3.15 meters it means that the height from roof to floor okay it should be 3.15 and the height of the window which is sill level uh, you can say which is the height should be the top level of the window should be up to 7 feet okay the next point is the volume of one bag of cement is 1.25 cubic feet and it is equal to 0 0.035 if we talk about uh, cubic meters okay 0 0.035 cubic meters this is the volume of one bag of cement and the weight of one cement bag is 50 kg okay and the minimum thickness of slab is equal to 125 millimeters or it should be equal to 5 inches this is the minimum thickness of the slab and the number of cement bags in one square meters is 28.8 bags okay and the minimum lintel thickness should be 15 centimeters and the lintel is provided at 2.4 meter in case of brick wall the next most important point for civil engineer is that minimum diameter of bars used in slab is equal to 8 millimeters okay and the minimum diameter of bar used in column should be equal to 12 millimeters okay and the minimum diameter of bars in dowel bars is equal to 12 millimeters okay and the minimum diameter of bars in slab is equal to 1 divided by 8 multiplied by thickness of the slab as we discussed in the previous slide the minimum thickness is 5 inches so the minimum dia of the bar which we are going to use in slab should be equal to this product okay and the maximum chair spacing should be equal to 1 meters from all sides okay the next most important point for civil engineers and site workers is maximum water absorption of first class brick should be equal to 15 percent of its dry weight and the initial setting time of cement is equal to 30 minutes and final setting time of cement should be equal to is equal to 10 hours or you can say 600 minutes and dpr dpr is actually detailed project report which the site engineer prepare fortnightly or you can say after one week or after 10 days depending upon the project progress okay this is detailed project report 
and RFI RFI is request for inspection which the contractor request the consultant in written form that please come and check my work on site he generate this RFI which is request for inspection the next point is unit weights now this is very important to learn few of the unit weights of the uh, you can say the RCC, uh, PCC, steel and Portland cement. These are important. These are important because if you know the unit weights, you can calculate the weight of any structural member. For example, we have a RCC beam, okay, and the length of the beam is 4 meters, depth of the beam is 0.45 meters, and the width of the beam is 0.3 meters. Let us calculate the volume. Volume will be equal to 4 into 0 0.45 into 0 0.3 by multiplying all these three dimensions we will get the volume of this beam okay now if we multiply now to calculate the weight what is the what will be the weight of this beam okay to calculate weight you should know these unit weights okay so to calculate the weight we will multiply this volume with this value which is 25 kilonewton per cubic meters and we will get weight which is 13.5 kilonewton or you can convert it into kgs as we know that 1 kg is equal to 9.81 newton or normally it is taken equal to 10 newtons okay if we multiply uh, sorry if we divide this value this is 13.5 and multiply it by 1000 it will become 13500 and divided by 9.81 you will get the weight in kg or mass in kg which is 1376 kg so you can calculate the weight of any structural member if you know these unit weights so these are very important for civil engineers to learn or remember these values uh, similarly you can calculate the weight uh, of the steel if you know it's uh, unit weight okay and similarly portland cement and its unit weight is 14 kilonewtons per cubic meter okay the next important point is one gallon is equal to 3.78 liters and minimum number of bars now this is very important if someone asks uh, that how much a steel bar should be provided in a square column or rectangular column you should say that minimum bars should be four if this is the cross section of the beam so minimum four bars one bar should be placed at here it means that two bars should be on the top and two bars should be on the bottom okay so for square and rectangular column the bar should be four numbers and for circular column it should be six in numbers this is the minimum number of bars okay and standard size of a brick it may vary from country to country but in pakistan we use nine inches into 44.5 inches into three inches this is the standard size of the brick the next important point or unit is one yard is equal to three feet okay one furlong is equal to 201.168 meters and one kg is equal to 2.204 lbs these units are very important to remember because these units help you in conversions okay so one kg is equal to 9.81 this is already discussed in my previous slide and the density of pure water is 9.81 so these are the questions which are usually asked during interviews and in short questions like in MCQs test etc the next point is the size of the concrete testing cube is equal to 150 by 150 by 150 now this is the standard size of the cube which is used for checking the compressive strength of the concrete and concrete cube is filled in three layers okay and the slum cone is filled in four layers okay don't confuse in these two things this is for concrete cube and this is for slum cone okay and there are basically four types of slum zero slump true slump and shear slum the fourth one is collapse and the picture is over here this is true slump this is zero slump that as it shows no uh, change in shape okay it will be called as zero slump and if it collapses, it is called as collapsed uh, shear slump and then shear slump if a side of the cone sli slides away 
then it will be called as shear slump. The next important point for civil engineers is that cement should be used within three months of manufacturing. So the manufacturing, the to note the manufacturing date is very important for site engineers or civil engineers that it should be less than three months. The minimum thickness of shear wall is equal to 150 millimeters and maximum thickness of shear wall is equal to 400 millimeters and minimum percentage of steel in columns is equal to 0.08 percent of the grass area. Okay, grass area of the concrete okay and the maximum percentage of steel in columns is 6% of the gross area so these are very important to remember for civil and site engineers as well okay the next important point is maximum percentage of steel in beam is equal to 2% of gross area and minimum percentage of steel in beam is equal to 1% of gross area this is maximum and minimum in beams okay and the minimum percentage of steel in slab is equal to 0.7 percent of gross area and maximum percentage of steel is in slab is 7 percent so this is 0.7 to 7 percent for slabs okay and maximum percentage of steel in footing is equal to 0.8 percent and minimum is 0.7 percent the next important point is about covers concrete covers concrete covers are basically provided to protect the steel from catching rust okay this is very important to provide and it should be equal to 40 millimeters for column and for footing it should be 50 millimeters for slab it should be 20 millimeter and for beam it should be equal to 25 millimeters and the most important point for lapping is lapping is not allowed in bars of diameter 36 millimeters or more uh, welding is preferred if the bar diameter is more than now it has changed it is uh, 32 millimeters okay if the diameter of bar is greater than 32 millimeters then welding will be preferred okay so that's all for today i hope you have liked the video and if you are new to my channel and haven't subscribed my channel till now you are requested to please subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon to get video updates that's all for today